Hi, everyone. Um, I would like to thank to Punar Denc uh, for her kind invitation to be a speaker as part of the Turkey Beyond Borders uh, lecture series. My lecture today draws from ethnographic research among queers, trans people, feminists, and sex workers in Turkey over longer than a decade now. It's a segment from my forthcoming book, Violent Intimacies, the Trans Everyday and the Making of an Urban World, which examines how everyday troubles with transness in social and institutional life uh, shape the organization of state power, the social production of family and kinship, the transformation of urban geography, the religious and moral order, and LGBTI plus uh, activism in Turkey. I foreground in my analysis how trans people respond to this process in their uh, everyday negotiations with state legal and medical authorities, police officers, family members, religious actors, and members of feminist and LGBTI plus organizations. This is a, a trans feminist research, that is a feminist research that is informed by uh, trans politics and it centers on trans perspectives, experiences, and stories. With this research, I join other scholars of trans studies who critique the concepts of sex, gender, and sexuality as the only vector to understand trans issues and instead uh, shed light on a wider scope of analysis about hierarchies of life, existence, social organization, and ways of knowing. Hereby, I echo uh, trans studies scholars, Susan Strikers and Aran Azura's salient call on the analytical and political need for the circulation of transgender as uh, multiple modes of analysis, rather than its signification as a static uh, identity category or specific ways uh, of being in the world. As they note, uh, trans studies significantly contribute to quote, the proliferation and articulation of new modes of embodied subjectivity, new cultural practices, and new ways of understanding the world, rather than becoming an enclosure for their containment, end of quote. Recent scholarship in critical trans studies, especially trans of color critique, pushes us further to think more critically about transness, as a place of possibility, as well as a formative site for relations of race and racialization, diaspora and migration, surveillance and securitization, political economy and labor, and disability and indigeneity. Uh, I piled together a list of recommended readings based on this set of scholarship, and you can find them uh, on the Turkey Beyond Borders website under the recording of this lecture. In close uh, conversation with the scholarship, my book tells a story of transness as a site of also world making in the thresholds of dominant sociocultural life. This location of transness is a transnational site of theory, which aims to transgress the ongoing hegemony of North American and Eurocentric accounts in uh, trans studies. In contrary to implicit or explicit scholarly assumptions, uh, art locations outside the Euro North American contexts are not merely the places where theories are tested for their applicability or failure. Howard Chiang, in his recent uh, book Transtopia, criticizes the ethnic um, supplementary position that non Americanist and non European scholarship is expected to occupy as a fixer uh, to intellectual content created by. Americanists and Europeanists in trans studies. In great agreement with the statement, uh, I underscore that the locations outside the Euro North American contexts, including Turkey, involve multiple geographies of theoretical production to understand the world beyond local, national, and regional boundaries. So uh, my research also serves for this theoretical endeavor, as well as makes a contribution to trans feminist studies. In Turkey, um, the intimate world of the trans everyday, for example, trans people's bodies, their personal relationships, and trans spaces of inhabitation and socialization are in very violent ways 
uh, made sexually and morally legible and less ambiguous by social actors, such as state officers, family members, landlords, neighbors, medical experts, religious authorities, clients, lovers, partners, activists, etc. Yet uh, the very violent conditions of trans lives are at the same time the conditions of empowerment, resistance, resilience, and struggle in intimate ways. The trans everyday, which uh, I use the term in, in the book and, and develop the term of the trans everyday, um, involves not only victimization, objectification, and suffering, uh, but also the formation of affinities, solidarities, proximities, sentiments, and care in and through relations of violence and regimes of power. For example, um, trans people adopt and care for their friends and reclaim their friends' funerals and monitor needs in the face of familial abandonment and disowning. Uh, they turn violence into the creative substance of family and kin work. They redefine and uh, transform the political language and demands. They intimately organize um, community spaces by turning them into their homes. They actively participate in the formation of urban geography. They invent tactics to cope with state violence, which in turn uh, pressures the police to formulate new extra legal tactics of securitization. And they create themselves as political actors in organizing and mobilizing around hate crimes, police violence, state control over gender confirmation process, violence against women, and gender discrimination in general. The trans everyday all unfolds also through dance parties, performances, branches, picnics, uh, dinners, and mehane nights, within which intimacies and mid um, intimacies mediate and uh, manifest as um, love, care, joy, laughter, as well as tears. This size of intimacy creates great beauty through which trans and queer people cultivate belonging, form coalitions, and imagine as well as act upon affective and collective forms of social transformation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, between the time of my research in 2010, my main fieldwork, and the time of uh, preparing this presentation, there have been notable social transformations in the world of queer and trans people in and beyond Turkey. I extensively discuss uh, these transformations in the book with a specific focus on the trans everyday, but here I want to center on the exciting and the growing alliances and coalitions between queer, trans, and feminist movements, especially since 2012. This is just a segment uh, from the contemporary history of queer, trans, and feminist movements in Turkey, and how trans feminism has shaped gender politics and feminist questions in our geography. And for the sake of the clarity of my presentation, I, want, I organized the contemporary history of this coalitional political space around two main issues that have solidified an anti-trans political position in Turkey. Uh, first, the authoritarian cis heterostate structure, and second, a group of so-called feminists, or in more popular terms, TERFs, trans-exclusionary radical feminists, um, who claim themselves to be gender critical. Though I claim that non um, that uh, trans exclusion cannot be a position in any feminist project because it would defy the very foundations of feminism as a liberationist political and social project. That's why I refrain from using the term feminists, uh, but instead call this group an anti-trans camp. Um, first off, a brief context to the uh, recent history in Turkey. Uh, the experiences, uh, struggles, and stories from the early 2010s still heavily um, weigh on the present and emergent conditions of trans lives. Yet this historical proximity can sometimes feel like distance when one considers the events and processes that have radically shifted the geo- and sociopolitical uh, context of Turkey in the past decade. It would be uh, challenging to offer a comprehensive portrayal of all this change in its multiple and differential scales. 
Instead, I will highlight a few of these key events and processes. Um, the launching of Twitter in 2011 in Turkey and the gradual growth of other digital platforms, Gaza protests in 2013, the 2015 general elections and the preceding war waged against uh, Kurds in Kurdistan, the coup attempt in 2016, a series of purges on the Fethullah Gulen supporters, Kurdish politicians, activists, and academics for peace, a rapid and exponential increase in migration from war-torn geographies of Syria, Iraq, Afghanistan, and more recently, Ukraine and Russia, um, the COVID-19 pandemic, a growing aggressive interventionist model into the Middle East, and the accelerating economic crisis and hyperinflation as of 2021. Intensifying authoritarianism, national securitization, economic downfall have had tremendous and devastating impacts on queer and trans lives, precisely because they have shaped the everyday of Turkey itself. Um, within the specific context of queer and trans lives, this turbulent social and political environment has produced particularly harmful public discourses and acts of violence and discrimination. The year 2015 marks a new turning point in the gradually intensifying uh, state warfare against queer and trans lives and their demonization in the public eye through ideological and political instruments. Uh, and of course, we know that this warfare uh, was nothing new. It existed back in the 1970s, 1980s coup d'etat period, 1990s gentrification of Jihangir and forceful displacement of trans women from uh, Ulkar Sid. And I, I touched upon these issues extensively in my uh, forthcoming book. Um, when I conducted my main research in 2010 in Istanbul, the AKP government had started uh, developing its official anti-LGBTI plus stance through public discourses by uh, Salma Ali Kavaf, the then Minister for Women and Family Affairs. But 2015 marks a new turn uh, in the state's development of a more systemic and official anti-LGBTI plus agenda by resorting to heightened uh, concerns for national security, uh, family values, public morals, and social order. The state has banned political events, campaigns, and activities regarding queer and trans issues and targeted those of us who were part of the struggles as uh, threats to public decency and social order. More recently, uh, two political events in 2021 have uh, amplified the gradual targeting, securitization, and criminalization of queer and trans activists and feminists uh, by the Turkish state. Uh, feminist queer trans protests against the withdrawal from the Istanbul Convention on March 20, and the uh, Boğaziçi University student protests that started on February 2nd. Uh, both of these events happened at the same time and heightened the visibility and recognition for LGBTI plus issues and also consolidated collaborations and alliances between certain feminists and queer and trans activists. Uh, the Istanbul Convention, which is formally the Convention on Preventing and Combating Violence Against Women and Domestic Violence, uh, was signed in Istanbul in 2011. Turkey was the first state uh, to ratify the convention in 2012, followed by 33 other countries. The treaty advocated uh, for a more comprehensive and holistic understanding of gender violence. It approaches gender violence, not as an individual issue, but rather as a political one, uh, as a systemic problem prevailing every single sphere of life. Signature states of the Istanbul Convention uh, are legally bound to the punishment of perpetrators, as well as to the prevention of violence and the protection of victims. The convention also stresses the protection of victims from violence based on their sexual orientation and gender identification, thus deploying the concepts of gender as a social construct and sexual orientation. It is this specific emphasis that the Turkish government and its allies uh, exploited to organize a smear campaign against the treaty, 
and demonize it for its inclusion of queer and trans people. Opponents of the convention argue that the treaty encouraged people uh, to become LGBTI plus and encourage women for divorce, both of which were politically uh, promulgated as values against the so-called uh, Turkish feminist structure and its values. For instance, um, the State Directorate of Communications officially stated, quote, the convention's original intention of promoting women's rights by ha was hijacked by a group of people attempting to normalize homosexuality and that it was incompatible with Turkey's social and family values, end of quote. Several state officers, including the Interior Minister Suleyman Soylu, started labeling um, LGBTI plus people as perverts and threats to our children through their official social media accounts and public speeches. And this anti-LGBTI plus position was not unique to Turkey. The rise of the right-wing authoritarianisms across the globe in countries such as the United States, Brazil, and India effectively used anti-LGBTI plus position, um, uh, anti-LGBTI plus uh, agendas to consolidate their power as well as the international alliances with each other. In the meantime, Middle Eastern countries of Egypt, Lebanon, and Qatar gradually invested in the growth of a more systemized uh, anti-queer stance that led to a series of bans and crackdowns on queer activities and places. A lethal consequence of this panic was the suicide of a prominent Egyptian communist and queer activist, Sarah Hijazi, who was arrested and tortured by the Egyptian government for raising um, a rainbow flag at the 2017 Cairo concert of the Lebanese rock uh, band, Mashru Leila, whose lead singer, uh, was openly queer. Later, Sarah was granted asylum in Canada where she took her own life. Her death um, shook uh, not only the broader queer Arab world with great sorrow and grief, but also queer people in Turkey, leading to her mourning in several platforms. Uh, this systemic growth in an anti uh, in, in anti-LGBTI plus government politics in the Middle East was accompanied by also the right-wing governments in Eastern Europe and Northern Asia, specifically those of Poland, Hungary, Romania, Bulgaria, and Russia. Turkey found more strength and motivation in this transcontinental coalescence of anti-LGBTI plus tends to increase its violent pressure on queer and trans lives, and to denunciate the Istanbul um, Convention in 2021. In response to Turkey's withdrawal, um, senior government members announced that they would deal with domestic violence through judicial reform. They would come up with an Ankara Convention that would claim its power from Turkish traditions and mm, customs. Um, feminist, queer, and trans movements organized around the slogan, uh, the Istanbul Convention saves lives, both in streets and on social media, and draw attention uh, to the dangers of the withdrawal, which would send a public message uh, that women's lives and gender violence did not matter. The withdrawal meant um, the weakening of legal measures to prevent violence and femicides, thus encouraging perpetrators. At the time of the withdrawal, femicides and hate crimes in Turkey was in fact on the rise. In the context of the COVID-19 restrictive measures uh, in Turkey, the risk of domestic violence against women, queers, trans people, and children increased. This was indeed, there was indeed a growing need uh, for more, not fewer, tools to prevent and eradicate uh, gender violence in all its forms. However, the state officials have ignored this need and rather endorsed um, public circulation of hatred for women, queers, and trans people on uh, social media and beyond. The second important uh, political event that solidified an anti-LGBTI environment in Turkey was student protests at Boğaziçi University, my alma mater. Um, Boğaziçi is a prestigious public institution recognized for its liberal democratic campus life. 
uh, it has historically been a pioneering institutional home for critical and creative thinking and innovative research in Turkey and abroad. It is one of the rare remaining uh, public spaces for encounters among students who come from all walks of life that are, that are shaped by class, ethnic, religious, sexual, and gender difference. Um, especially for the first generation university graduates, graduates like me who moved to Istanbul uh, from more conservative uh, urban and rural environments in Turkey, Bozci was a radically transformative and life-changing place. Uh, Bozici's um, democratic campus culture and critical education has long been targeted by the AKP government and Recep Tayyip Erdogan's presidency. Until the coup attempt in 2016, university rectors who occupy roles similar to university presidents in the US used to be democratically elected by faculty members and the then uh, results of those elections would determine who the president uh, appointed. The post-coup attempt statutory decrees change this procedure. Today, rectors are directly appointed by the president. The electoral process has been removed. Furthermore, um, the boss director had always been someone from that university community. But as of 2020, rectors and deans from outside Boazici have been imposed on the university by the, Turkey, the Turkish president, and in the case of deans, by the rector who was appointed by the Turkish president. These top-down decisions have disrupted the democratic culture on campus and mobilized both faculty members and students around protests that have been ongoing now for almost two years. On the first day of the protest, a queer women student climbed up on the main gate and waved um, a rainbow flag against a sea of police officers blocking the entrance of campus. The university was placed under siege by the state security forces. Students' protests have been harshly repressed by police violence and threats of torture under custody. Kurdish queer and trans students were particularly targeted for arrests and physical attacks. Uh, protesters were detained for simply carrying or waving a rainbow flag. The rainbow flag has gained a semi-criminal status during these protests. Even though being neither queer nor trans is illegal in Turkey, uh, the legal tools at the hands of the state have turned more and more into extra legal instruments to demonize uh, LGBTI plus activists and certain feminist groups and separate their political struggles from each other as well as from other oppositional groups. The state security, uh, the state security and legal forces have intensified their uh, capacities to criminalize LGBTI plus people, single them out as criminals or terrorist type, and hence divide the coalitions of dissidents. The rainbow flag transformed into a semi-illegal or an extra-legal flag during these protests. Currently, the police have been uh, searching for rainbow flags in protesters' backpacks and purses at every entry point to a political demonstration. Protesters were detained for simply carrying or waving a rainbow flag. At student hearings, judges uh, started asking with impunity whether the defendant was a member of LGBTI+. Uh, during the Pride March of June 2022, the number of detained protesters was 373. Being in police custody turned into a practice of torture as protesters were handcuffed behind their backs and forced to stay in detention vehicles for several hours in that position. The police also attacked uh, lawyers when they showed up to defend those demonstrators under custody. Five lawyers worked into the early morning to legally support 373 people, making sure to be present at their hearings on a voluntary basis. Lawyers themselves were left alone by the Istanbul uh, bar in spite of their calls on, um, calls on their fellow lawyers for more legal support. Uh, this state-backed institutional warfare was further augmented with the countrywide coordination of several civil society groups under the banner of the Great Family Gathering in 2022. On September 18, as many as 100 
50 non-governmental organizations coordinated a march in Fatih, a central and conservative neighborhood in Istanbul, to stand against, as they noted, quote, the increasing uh, LGBTI propaganda and imposition in Turkey. Fundamentalist um, religious groups stood aside, side by side with ultra-secularist and nationalist ones, collectively calling on the state to ban all LGBTI plus groups and activities, including queer and trans content on Netflix and other digital platforms, penalize people who publicly advocate for LGBTI plus issues, and demanded the migration uh, of LGBTI uh, people from Turkey to live abroad. The state, through its broadcasting uh, regulator, uh, the radio and television Supreme uh, Council, Rutuk, officially approved the display and dissemination of the video call for the Israeli on popular TV channels. The petition campaign, uh, Protect Your Family and Generation from Perversity, um, received thousands of signatures. Other cities followed Istanbul in orchestrating their own marches and petition campaigns. The Israelis gradually defined LGBTI plus uh, people as a national security problem, struggled for the categorization of LGBTI organization as terrorist organizations, thus demanding, the, demanding from the state to take the necessary precautions in order to protect Turkey, um, Turkish social and family values. The terrorist and terrorism as a figure and a site respect, respectively has continued to expand on an unprecedented pace to include feminists, queers, trans people, in addition to the usual suspects, such as Kurds, uh, academics for peace, left-wing organizers, and supporters of Fethullah Gulen, who indeed began as strong allies uh, with the AKP government and the invisible actors of the state. At the time of the, this video recording, multiple variations of LGBTI are constantly and frequently vocalized as a targeting state discourse from TV channels and a key concern in the state's political agenda. The government even attempted, attempted to modify basic citizenship rights for trans people by recommending legal amendments to their, to their marital and adoption rights. For instance, one of the discussions was to deny the heterosexual marital rights to trans people. As much as um, it's horrifying and concerning, this ascending obsession with LGBTI plus at both the state and society levels also shows how um, trans, queer and feminist movements in Turkey have become a key political actor in state politics. Uh, shaping the political environment and discourse powerfully. The bridges and alliances between feminist, queer, and trans movements have grown more solid and vital. Since the years of my own participation in these struggles, and a, a whole new uh, feminist, queer, and trans generation has grown, fearlessly pushing back on increasing authoritarianism, while also gradually settling in a central location of political agency in the country. In the rest of this lecture, uh, I will uh, briefly touch upon this ongoing beautiful story through the specific category of Lubunia. Until um, very recently, the category of Lubunia embraced trans people, gay men with feminine gender, and those who occupy a liminal position between the two. Uh, but especially since 2019, it has gained more popular currency and been embraced by the wider LGBTI uh, plus community. Lubunia now also embraces cis lesbians, uh, queer women, trans men and non-binary cis and trans people besides trans women, gay men with feminine gender, and those who occupy a liminal position between the two. Uh, the recent um, expansion of Lubunya, so as to include a wider group of LGBTI plus people, I argue, uh, has something to do with the formation of new alliances among feminist, queer, and trans groups around trans feminism, uh, alliances that emerge in reaction to the local forms and discourses of the anti-trans camp, or you might recognize them as trans uh, turfs, trans exclusionary radical feminists. 
uh, starting especially with the International Women's Day March um, in 2011, the feminist scene in Istanbul um, has been had been marked by tensions between some cis feminist women and a group of activists, including trans, queer, and other cis women. Uh, while for some cis feminists, trans politics uh, meant just another form of identity politics and was thus not engaged in a struggle to liberate a women, trans activists often saw cis feminists uh, as gender essentialists and gatekeepers of the category of women. Uh, I wrote about this political tensions in a separate piece, uh, Mortal Life of Trans Feminism, back then. I also included this reading as part of the uh, recommendation uh, reading list on the website. In 2012, a market feminist magazine organized a series of roundtables to provide a platform for a dialogue between feminist, queer, and trans politics. These exchanges were later published as a book, uh, are characterized by questions now familiar to those of us at the intersection of feminism and trans activism such as what is feminism, whose feminism counts as feminism, which demands uh, her herald a more feminist agenda, who is a woman, what's the difference between uh, having feminine experience and compulsory feminine experience. Trans uh, feminism uh, emerged as an urgent and uh, central topic in these conversations. Some of the cis feminists have transformed through these conversations and revised their approach to feminism in general. Uh, consequently, in 2012, Women's Night March included trans, queer, and some cis feminist activists uh, carrying their own placards that read, trans feminists are here. In 2018, uh, another trans-related crucial topic caused rifts uh, and tensions among cis trans feminists and LGBTI plus people inflamed the political scene once again. This time, the issue revolved around the use of puberty blockers and hormone replacement therapy among trans children and youth, and it's sanctionary by some uh, cis feminists. Conversations around hormone therapy triggered long-standing biases against especially trans women, finding its language in trans misogynistic phrases like trans women's uh, male privilege. The entire exchange turned into months long intense fights between trans queer feminists and the anti-trans camp and frequently flickered periodically um, to this day in 2023. As disputes continued mainly on social media, they reached out to a wider number of audience leading to growing support for trans and queer people among academics, journalists, human rights lawyers, NGO workers and some political parties in addition to feminists and LGBTI plus from uh, across the country. Hence the recent reclaim of Lubunia, I argue, is a product of the stimulating environment. The language uh, we use to create categories and terms uh, for our lives is a terrain of living. It evolves, responds, reacts, and re reconfigures uh, assemblages and alliances. Actually, these alliances are not new. Uh, before concluding, I want to turn to a feminist campaign from the 1990s to remember that trans and cis feminists, in fact, established alliances and organized campaigns uh, together around gender inequality and discrimination in the past. One prominent campaign was against the Article 438 of the Turkish Penal Code that mitigated the punishment of the rapist if the victim was proved to be a sex worker. The logic behind this regulation had strong ties to a culture of honor that differentially uh, valued non-sex worker women over sex workers and categorized them as chaste and unchaste, uh, respectively. Cis trans feminists and sex workers gathered together and organized the campaign No to 438. The campaign started with trans feminist sex worker uh, Demet Demer's reading of a collective press statement in the famous red light um, district of the Bayola area, Zurefa Street. Later in the same year, Article 438 was annulled due to the leverage that the ongoing feminist protests uh, provided. To sum up, 
it's important to remember those stories of uh, feminist organizing and link them to our present struggles, transmit the memory of those alliances to younger generations, and recognize the torn uh, yet long history of uh, coalitional feminist politics. All of us continue to be challenged by younger generations, learn from them, and grow together with them. Lubunya feminism existed in the past, exists in the present, and will exist and grow even bigger in the future. I think uh, Lubunya feminism is the future. Thank you.